Hi everyone, so today I'm heading off to Norwich for work purposes and uh, it's the first time I've actually had an opportunity to drive a really decent drive with the Polestar and uh, yeah for me driving from uh, where I live in Sussex up to Norfolk is probably going to take about three hours so it's really nice to be able to do that in this car and see what the experience is actually like taking an electric car on a slightly longer journey um, and also charging on the way so yeah if you stick with the video you will uh, you'll just see my thoughts and my experience of taking the Polestar on, on a longer trip than my usual driving around um, that I've done in most of my other videos and what that experience is like. So let uh, me just show you what I'm going to do on the maps first. Okay, so let's have a look at a better route planner. Click on that, see what we can get from here in terms of uh, calculations. So it's just loading up. Okay, so let's uh, select the starting point. I think I'll make that where I am at the moment, obviously. So let's start with my position, destination. Let's go for Norwich, click start. Okay, so it's saying 2 hours and 50 minutes plus eight minutes for one charge at that shell um, four went ways. Okay, so it's really useful seeing this because you can see um, with 85% showing the battery amount down here what we would need to arrive there with 10%, which is, is really cool. Really nice, easy way of doing things. But actually, I don't think I want to stop there because while that might be a good place to go, I'm going to stop um, somewhere else. And if we have a look here at Google Maps, let's see what the map says um, would be a good route. So select that and then let's select um, Norwich. Oh, so look at this. Three hours and 50 minutes, one hour and 32 minute delay on the M25 due to an accident. So that's, uh, that's not looking great. So I might <laughs> need to reroute. Um, yeah, that's a frustrating situation to be in. Um, so now if I hit add charging stop, let's see what it comes up with. So it's going to offer a variety of different things. But now what I actually did earlier is I had a look on, um, on Zap map and that's an app that's really useful. And I found a new BP pulse location with 150 kilowatt charger that is located let me just zoom out so we can see this better that is located um where i want to kind of on the way on so near Dartford. you are on the fastest route you oh. should reach your destination by 1715 okay so that's a pretty bad delay actually stop zooming in so um what i have want to show you is um is that it this actually doesn't seem to be in the Google Maps database yet, but it was on ZapMap, and it's a 150 kilowatt charger located here. So it's kind of halfway for me. So I thought I'll, I'll go and check that out and uh, see what it's like charging there. And also I have some credit with um, BP, so it'd be great to use that en route today. All right, uh, yeah, let's head off. So the other thing I wanna do is uh, just track consumption a little bit on this journey. So let's uh, reset this. Now, interesting thing, if you wanna see, three, 417 miles, um, 34.1 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So not doing too badly on the consumption at the moment, but um, I'm going to reset this and uh, see what it's like once we get there. So yeah, let's head off. Okay, so we've been driving for uh, not very long, maybe half an hour or so. And uh, yeah, that traffic situation on the M25 is really bad. Now, if you're watching this from another country, the M25 is notoriously bad um, when it comes to traffic. It's fine when it runs okay, but when there's an accident or something goes wrong, everything, everything just goes wrong. There is, there's no, there's no, um, there's nothing you can do about it um, because there's so little options to get around the traffic. Um, but uh, it's, it's quite interesting what I just discovered on Google Maps. I originally had navigated all the way to Norwich and it was giving me 1%, maybe 0% on arrival. So it wasn't really willing to reroute. Then what I did is I navigated direct to the BP Pulse that I was looking at stopping at. And um, it then gave me a reroute to try and get around some of that traffic because, and I guess this is the thinking of the, of the system here is that it can get me to, um, to, where, I, to where I want to charge with 40% battery taking that reroute. If I navigate to Norwich and I've got 1%, it doesn't have much options in terms of trying to 
decide that for you unless you are, you are choosing a, a stopping point on the way. So my point is, if you're navigating with this and you do come across some bad traffic, if you're navigating somewhere with a very low percentage remaining on arrival, it's well worth navigating to somewhere a little closer, um, perhaps a charging stop that you know you want to go to, and then it might give the uh, the system an opportunity to reroute you um, to try and avoid some of that traffic, even if that does use up some of your battery. It's not limited by the fact you're going to arrive with a really low percentage. Okay, so Google has done an excellent job of rerouting around that um, accident and that issue on the N25. Um, and the interesting thing is, because the range has actually turned out to be pretty good, um, it is showing 3% now on arrival in Norwich. So I've I've changed it, having set it to, to go to that particular charger, to just go straight to Norwich now with 3%. I probably won't do that, to be honest. I think I'll stop. But interesting to see that we're gaining range anyway um, and we started with about 85 percent and now it's showing the trip manual showing 31.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles so based on 72.5 usable battery that is um, a range of 230 miles so that's actually looking really good um, and the interesting thing is uh, earlier when I when I reset that I think it was 34 so for my last sort of 500 miles worth of driving um, I was on uh, 34 and that was mainly mixed driving a lot of that was short trips no long trips in there and that's showing a range of 213 miles now the weather has in, has been a bit warmer lately but today it's only seven degrees it's cold um, and it was really cold overnight I preconditioned the car before I left but not for very long um, I, I did one very short drive it was about five minutes uh, so yeah what, what I'm trying to say is that um, since the software updates that have been released I have seen uh, quite a significant improvement in the consumption and was slightly warmer weather so that uh, yeah it's definitely nice to see okay so uh, yeah continue on the drive to uh, Norwich and I decided not to stop at that BP Pulse location the traffic was really bad around that area and it looked like it was adding about 10 minutes just to get off the, the what am I on the M11 uh, yeah 10 minutes just to get off the M11 charge up uh, and then get back on so that extra 10 minutes didn't seem worth it at the time as I didn't really need the toilet or to eat anything and um, the map has improved to about four or five percent um, so I, I thought what I'll do is I'll just skip that charge and I'll carry on um, there are a few other options I had to look on Google Maps um, that it gives me along the way and this is something that I really like um, I will try and show you on the screen separately so you can see this because not so easy to film it while you're driving but on the screen it will show you how much you have to deviate so if uh, you were to to choose to drive you know for example you're going to Norwich and uh, it will show you the option to add charging stop if you do that it will then show you the different charging options the fast the slow and it will show you how much extra time it will take to get to those so you can uh, you can be quite strategic about choosing one um, like for example that the ones that are coming up on the display are an extra eight minutes which doesn't seem too bad but again it's kind of it's kind of out of the way so it makes you think well do you really need to stop at those ones and at the moment I'm kind of thinking that you know with 5% remaining when I get there I've navigated to a, I think it's called Rose Lane car park there's a charging facility there there's multiple chargers hopefully they work and I'm thinking maybe I'll just um, not even bother to charge I'll just get there with 5% and plug in and charge up overnight so yeah let's see how it goes for the next uh, the next few minutes I decided that I would stop at this uh, service station. I actually didn't um, stop to charge. I thought I would stop and go to the toilet and grab something to eat quickly. And uh, I thought, yeah, it's a service station, so it's probably going to have an ecotricity. And sure enough, it does. There's an ecotricity charger here. Now, these are notoriously unreliable. Um, they don't always work, but it seems like this one is working okay, which is good. So I, I hooked up, connected, and uh, got started with the charge just while I went in quickly to go to the toilet. But now this is a, a good opportunity for me to show you 
you what a better route planner does. So have a look at the screen. Down here at the bottom, you've got this button that shows 52% and 42 kilowatts. That is now the charging speed that we're getting in the car. And uh, we actually get quite a cool graph here. Um, and it's showing, yeah, 41.8 kilowatts. So it's really nice to finally be able to see that information in the Polestar. And uh, the interesting thing is on the display over here, sorry, my steering wheel is kind of, tilted over so 120 miles per hour it's showing so on that basis we can work out that 120 divided by 42 it's using about 2.8 as the multiplier now I always used about 2.6 I think um, so maybe I was um, actually giving it a slightly better um, number than uh, than that but uh, yeah so 2.8 looks like that's what um, we actually get when we can compare the two but um, this is something I want to see. If I so it's 42. If I click that and I turn off, let's turn the air off completely, and uh, we'll go back to a better route planner. Was it showing uh, 42? So um, what I what I wanted to see there is that uh, hasn't really made any difference. But I wasn't sure if it's if it's basically showing what we're pulling from the charger or if it's um, in any way biased in terms of what kind of. Uh, numbers we're getting whether that's affected here on the display by whether or not we actually have the air system on or not but um seems to be exactly the same number even with the the air off so uh, the truth is i don't really need to stay here much longer um let's go back to google maps and uh i will just double check where i'm going um rose lane car park there we go um one hour and 29 minutes and it's showing 12 percent on arrival so there's there really is no need to stay any longer than this because um, i'm planning to charge up as soon as i get there so uh yeah let's unplug and head off just before I do go, I wanted to mention uh, Ecotricity is uh, one of the original networks that's been around in the UK for quite a long time. They've got quite old equipment and it doesn't always work. But the good thing is, um, you might have seen this if you follow some of the EV news, GridServe are going to be working with Ecotricity to revamp all of these chargers. And in some locations, they're going to be adding more of the uh, faster chargers up to 150 kilowatts, I believe. And if not, in those cases, they'll just be replacing it with newer, more modern technology. And that's a really good thing because because Ecotricity have a lot of locations that are very convenient like this is a welcome break services on the M11 and it is literally straight off the road there's no detour I didn't have to go I didn't have to waste 10 minutes driving around to uh, you know a, a BP that was kind of set away from the location it's right here at the services and inside there's you know multiple Starbucks KFC Burger King uh, there's even a Waitrose in there a little Waitrose so these are great locations for convenient driving and you know what they really need to have this two locations here for charging but what we need to see is a bank bank of four and then in the future a bank of eight, eight and have that grow over time um, to give people more confidence when they uh, want to take longer trips in electric cars and know that they can charge at a location that's convenient it's not out the way and that there are facilities here to use okay so i've disconnected and that was about 10 kilowatt hours of uh electricity I took on board in 13 minutes so not far off a 50 kilowatt charge to be honest and that's not too bad now that will get me an extra probably maybe like 25 30 miles of driving so this is the thing with electric cars is you don't necessarily have to stop and charge for a long time I was down at an estimate of four percent so by charging up here for a few minutes um, while I needed to go to the toilet 13 minute stop gave me an extra 10 percent it uh, shows on arrival which is just a nice little extra buffer um, and it's charging while you wait anyway because i needed to stop now the nice thing is looking at consumption have a look at uh yeah well basically 31.3 kilowatt hours per 100 miles and uh that is from 91 miles of driving so on that basis 72.5 i'm using as the usable amount divided by 31.3 231 miles so yeah it's pretty good this is probably the best consumption i've seen for a long time um, and the temperature isn't even that warm i left it was about seven degrees it's showing nine degrees now so it's a combination of slightly warmer temperatures and also the battery improvements that polestar have released with their software updates so yeah let's head off uh rest of the journey another hour and 20 to go
Okay, so I've arrived in Norwich, finally. Uh, that was quite a long drive. Um, three hours and 32 minutes of driving, 175 miles. With quite a lot of traffic on the M25. But the really interesting thing is that uh, I got here and the, the car park I wanted to use with the charger was closed. Um, but that's the thing, you know, with the pandemic at the moment, um, not everything is open. Um, and when you do travel for work, actually it can be a bit frustrating because you don't always know if you're going to be able to park or be able to go where you think you're going to normally be able to go but um that was closed so that's where i was hoping to charge but i found another one i just went on zap map found a different car park drove there and it seems to be fine this is quite nice actually this is um the castle quarter car park in norwich there's a long bank of chargers and uh according to zap map they're free to use if you're parked here so that's actually a really nice bonus it's not even that expensive it's uh i think it's for four pounds overnight so i'm going to park here the battery was down at 15 percent by the time i got here that extra 10 percent that i added gave me a little bit of extra margin and the interesting thing is on the uh, trip computer you can see that it is showing 33.3 kilowatt hours per 100 miles over a 175 mile drive and that works out as a, a total range of 217 miles so yeah you can quite clearly see had i charged up to 100 percent before i left i would have made it here easily without having to charge and then you can just plug in at a location like this charge up to 100 percent and then go tomorrow morning and drive straight back home without having to um charge up at all so yeah really nice and it was uh, fantastic to drive the car as always but um especially when um I got onto those quieter roads as you drive up through uh, Suffolk and into Norfolk, past like uh, Wyndham and uh, Attleborough and places like that. Like the road is just so nice, great scenery, straight road, and uh, the pilot assist works really well just to make it a lot easier for driving. So yeah, made it here to Norwich and uh, tomorrow I'll go and do the work things I need to do and drive back home.